Okay, here we are. Again, this is part of a series. Uh, be sure to check out the full playlist, which will hopefully be a link in the description of this video or at the end of this video. And today uh, we're going to be looking at uh, some software I wrote. And again, the scenario here is um, you're, you work for a fire or emergency rescue department and your normal communication, the internet is down, but you still want to transmit information to computers out in the field. That's the scenario through radios that you have that work. So, there we go. If you go to github.com forward slash melx1000, there should be a link in the description of this video. I'll bring you to my GitHub page. Let's go ahead and go to repositories. And we're gonna go here and search radio. And the one you want is the radio transmissions. That's where all the code from this series is. There should be a link to that in the description as well. Today we're gonna be looking at the server one. Let's go ahead and you would choose this and you would copy this and clone it or download the zip file and unpackage it. Once you have that, you can be in there. And again, we're going to be going into the server one folder. So here we are. This is what you would see. Again, it's the same that's here. We got your mini modem scripts, your Morse code scripts, server one, server two, license and readme. That's what I have here. We're going to CD into server one. And so server one is a shell based server and client. So on the top screen, I'm gonna be doing this all on one machine, but in reality and we'll do this in the next videos and you saw it in the original video we're gonna be doing this over radio waves so here I'm going to go ahead and list out the files in here and you can see we got two scripts uh, we got a in out file and we also have a uh, data the data is just so it's transmitted but it's also stored so you can reference it later uh, so on the top is going to be my client so this is gonna be trucks out in the field so we'll start up the client and it says listening for transmissions and in this case, you'd be receiving through radio into the audio card of your computer, or if you have an SDR dongle, which we'll go over in the near future, you could also use one of those uh, if it is in the range that you're transmitting at. Any type of audio input is basically what we're, we're doing here. So that's running up there. And bottom screen here is gonna be our dispatch. So I'm gonna go ahead and dot slash dispatch. And now, so the dispatch, the bottom of the screen here is somebody at uh, dispatch that's taking calls in, and now they want to send those signals out to the trucks so they're displayed on their screen. So it's asking here for units. And I'm gonna say engine 24, medic 24, I'll hit enter and I'll say the address, 123 Pine Street. And the notes will be, you know, the reference, what's going on. And we'll just say here, sick person. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. And you see, uh, with all that noise, uh, you will see up on the top, once it's done transmitting, it all appears nicely formatted up there. You got your, your trucks that were dispatched. You've got the address you were dispatched to. You got the reason you're being dispatched and the time and date. And again, in the scenario here, uh, there will be audio transmissions, so you'll be telling that, but it's also nice to have it sent to a computer for reference later in case you didn't hear the address. And here I'm sending it once, and it's coming through. If your communications aren't very clear and you worry about loss of data, uh, you can always send everything twice, and then they can you know, determine, hopefully, if the address is missing a number or a letter in one of them, you can determine which one is the correct one. Um, but from my experience, as long as you have clear communications, everything should go through fine. Let's go ahead and do another one. Here we'll say engine 24, engine 47, uh, engine 20, rescue 20. And then we'll go ahead and hit enter and we'll say 321 Oak Ave North. And we'll say uh, fire. Sure, go ahead and hit enter. And there you go, you can see it came up here. Also, you notice when I have it, when you hit enter, it says it's transmitting and it tells you what you're transmitting. Uh, and then divides everything up, each call with a little equal sign line there. Uh, and let's go ahead and do one more and then we'll look at the code. So I'll say engine uh, 24, medic 24, engine uh, 20, and we'll say, uh, 101st Avenue and 
9th Street North MVA, Motor Vehicle Accident. And we can even say black pickup truck versus blue um, Ford. There we go. There we go. Now, uh, th this is the sort of thing, so I've been a firefighter for almost 14 years now. When I first started, we would get printouts. So there'd be a printer by the door, and when we get dispatched, we hear the audio, you know, a person telling us where to go, and uh, by the time we got to the door, uh, hopefully a paper with basically this type of information, uh, not much more, would be printed for us, and we can get in the truck and look it up in the map book. Nowadays, uh, it, the dispatch is uh, done by a computer, and it's a... Um, Computer generate. It's not computer generated voice. It's they actually recorded a lady's voice, and then the output is generated by the computer for the dispatch audibly. And we don't get printouts anymore, um, but the information goes to the computer, uh, which would also bring up the maps automatically for us. It's supposed to anyway. Um, but this is the basic information we care about when we're going out of calls: who's going, where we're going, and why we're going, and what time we were told to go to make sure that we're looking at the right call. Uh, so again, in our scenario. Uh, the internet's down, but we still want to get the information to the computers, and we can do that through radio waves. And uh, let's go ahead and look at this code. So I'm going to control C here and control C up here. And first, let's look at the dispatch. So Vim dispatch, and I'll make this full screen here. Very simple code. Uh, so by default, uh, start off the code, I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to set a message variable, CAD, um, which could be anything. And uh, then we have two functions here. Let's look at down here. This is going to be our main while loop here. So it's saying while one, meaning loop forever until you kill it. And what are we going to do? We're going to run the first function and then the second function. It was a very small program. I could have not created functions, just put them all in here. Uh, but I try to, I'm, I'm trying to be better about uh, keeping functions small so it's easy to find. It's a simple program now. It might get bigger as time goes on. So let's see, start transmissions. That's this up here. So what this is going to do is it's going to create a file in file out uh, called this, which in this case is CAD. Uh, so if we exit out of here and I list out my files again, you can see that there's a CAD file here. That's the file we created. So we're gonna create that each time to make sure it exists. And uh, here we're piping any error output to dev null because if it already exists, it's gonna give us an error message that it already exists. And then we're going to cat our message to mini modem here. So we're just gonna say CAD. Um, so so what is what is going on here? Uh, so a file in file out. So we need to constantly be reading from this file. So that's what we're doing here. We're creating the file and then we're saying read this file and dump all the contents to our mini modem to transmit it. Well, if we just create a regular file and we said cat, it would dump whatever was in there, which we just created. So there's nothing in there. And so nothing would be transmitted and then it'd be done. Nothing, nothing would happen. So what we're saying here is we're creating a file and then we're saying cat it. And since it's a file in file out uh, file, what we're going to do is basically we're creating this file that never ends. So it's constantly catting it. And if nothing's coming in, nothing's going out. But as soon as you start dumping stuff into that file, it's going to start piping it and transmitting it here. So that's what our next function does. It's going to ask questions, what units, and it will put that in a variable called truck, the address, put that in a variable called address, notes, and put it in a variable called notes. And I'm doing echo lines here, and I'm pretty sure the read command has an output option, um, but I can never remember what it is, and I <laughs> never look at the man file, so I always end up doing these echoes. So we can actually cut th this part of the code in half uh, if we just use the read function, but this works. So we're getting the units, we're getting the address, we're getting the, the notes, and then we're going to grab, after we receive all that, the current timestamp. They're going to say, okay, we're transmitting, and we're going to say what we're transmitting. And here we're going to be transmitting uh, the trucks. And then I'm using a pipe symbol to divide each column up. Uh, so trucks, address, notes, and time. We're displaying that. That's the output when you hit transmit. It says transmit. And that's telling you, the dispatcher, what you sent. Then we're going to actually take that same information and this blank line here and dump it into our CAD file, which will start transmitting all that information. And then we're going to do display on the dispatch screen a dividing line 
for the new call. So this line here, the dispatch does not see, that's being sent to mini modem and being sent out up here. So that's that code, very simple. Uh, I chose to use pipe symbols as my, basically they're like new line characters when they're being sent, you'll see when we get to the client code. Um, so uh, it's just for formatting on the other end. If the dispatcher was to put a pipe symbol in one of these outputs, it's not the end of the world, it would just put a new line in on the, on the client machine. So let's go ahead and quit out of that. And I'm gonna go into our clients now. So this is the truck code. And this is very, very simple. We're gonna clear the screen. We're gonna put a greeting message basically, which is what these two lines are, saying we're listening for transmissions, put a dividing line just so there's, you know, that's like a header. And then we're starting up mini modem. We're saying we're gonna receive at 110, which 110 is just a rate that I have found that can transmit Quick, the higher that number, the faster the transmission, but also less like the more likely you are to lose data. So 110 I find works well. It's a decent speed and you don't lose much data. Um, and then we're gonna pipe any error output to dev null because we don't want the client to see that. Uh, and then we're gonna say T, and T is a command. Basically, it allows you to dump the output of something into a file, but still display it on the screen. And the reason we're using T rather than just dumping into this file here, um, or if we were to just dump into that file, you wouldn't see it on the screen, which we want. But we also want to dump to this dat file so that they can reference it later. For some reason, uh, they accidentally close and clear the screen. They can still reference, it's just a plain text file. So we're saying, uh, basically, take the output of this, so basically the stuff being transmitted, dash A says append, so it's gonna put it all to the end of this file, but it's still going to display it on the screen. And then this said command here just says, take any pipe symbol being transmitted and make it a new line character. And that's it. So let's go ahead and uh, run this again. So I'm gonna say client. And again, I am uh, doing this all on one, one computer here, uh, but we're pretending that they're two different computers and we're going to, I've done in earlier parts of this series and I will again at the end, actually do this from two different things. So again, I said that uh, the new line character is a, uh, is a pipe symbol when you're transmitting. So if someone was to put, like instead of a comma here, if they did a pipe symbol and they said medic 24, and then we'll come down here, one, two, three, Oak Street North, blah, 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 my test. Now, now when it transmits, you notice instead of on one line, the, the um, engine and the medic are on two different lines. Um, so it's just, if you accidentally put one of those in there, not a big deal, it just adds a new line character where that is. Um, but that's it, very simple code. But in our next video, we're gonna use the same dispatch code, but uh, modify our, our client code and add some HTML to that so that on the user end, they get a nice clear, um, GUI interface, similar to what I did in the first video of this series, uh, but a little bit nicer and actually breaks this information up. So let's go ahead and uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment below if you're liking this series, and check out the full playlist in the link of uh, in the description of the video, uh, and uh, the next video, uh, which will be in a day or so hopefully, uh, will be that GUI code. Um, again, if you like my videos, filmsbychris.com, that's Chris Lake K. Chris with a K, there's a link in the description. There under support, you can support me through PayPal or at my Patreon page, page uh, patreon.com forward slash melx1000. If you like my videos, even a dollar a month helps. I appreciate it. And also sharing and liking this video helps as well. I thank you for watching as always. I hope that you have.